Hi, hi everyone. Today I'm talking about another top five Wednesday topic, and I will link the Goodreads group down below so that you can see the topics and um, the other members in such. This week's topic is um, books that you disliked but you love to discuss. Now I have to mention that I don't think I necessarily love discussing these ones. Um, under any, under all circumstances because um, I feel like the, the kind of things that we discuss in books sometimes are um, more about the content of the book and how it's handled rather than about how it's written and, and the characters and how good or bad it is so sometimes it can get kind of stressful to discuss things that have um, a lot of relevance in our real lives. I would say I like um, talking negatively about these books um, in a way because um, I feel like maybe people don't usually talk bad badly about these books. Well, most of these are books that people don't talk badly about. Number one is a very obvious choice, but you'll see. Um, and I like when, you know, you don't expect people to agree with you and suddenly they do. So, the first one, I will actually have this be in a, a real top 5 rather than just a list because uh, my previous top 5 Wednesdays have been really like um, 5 or have not been like 5 or 3 to 1, but this one is. So, the first one, uh, number 5, is a classic and it is Bram Stoker's Dracula. The thing with this book, and I, I, I have uh, probably spoken about this before, but the thing with this book, in these kind of old science fiction um, or, or supernatural books, is that I think that at the time they were trying really hard to be very realistic. For example, um, this one has, it is in chapters, but it's taken from journals and letters and that sort of thing. And that makes it really... You know, the way that people just go on and on about the things, um, I don't think it really translates well to a story like this one. So, I know that a lot of people do love this book, but I, I really like talking about how I, I don't think this format was ideal for, uh, for this type of book. Um, the same thing happens, for example, with Frankenstein, although I do... Um, I do like Frankenstein much more than I like this one. Yeah, it, it ended up making this reading much less interesting. I do like the story, but I can tell you, for example, um, if you watch a play based on this story, you will get much more enjoyment out of it than if you were to actually read the book, I think. That's like a gothic classic, so I, I feel really like rebellious saying that I don't like it. The next one is one that I don't own anymore. I used to own it, but I give it away to someone that will never give it back to me, so... It is Kafka on the Shore by um, Haruki Murakami. This book has problems. Um, it has many problems, first of all. And I gave it a first shot, okay? But I love when people just talk shit about this book because I couldn't stand it. It's one of the few books that I just really disliked to the point that I couldn't really finish it. I was able to read about two-thirds of the story and then I started, like, skim reading it. I mean, I couldn't really finish it and I, I didn't care really. I, I felt the characters were all too... they were either, either flat or unspecial um, or like, I mean they were unspecial but the, the you could tell that the author was trying to make them super special and they seemed pretty much like all the same character to me over and over and there was like a couple... there was like this part in which it really I mean, I wasn't liking the book in the first place because I don't like the writing style and, and a couple of things and I don't like the way that this author... Um, I don't like his take on surrealism because I read this book because it, it was um, hailed as this just surrealist masterpiece and I think that I like surrealist stuff um, and uh, absurdist reads and that sort of thing but I think that this was too random and I don't think it's the same thing being surreal and being random, but aside from that, there was this part that really left a really bad taste in my mouth where there was a scene with this really obvious like feminist straw man and I was like, this is so 
badly written, it's unacceptable. I mean, dialogue that just people don't talk like that. People never talk like that. Um, things that people never say. Um, I just, I mean, I know it's surrealist, but it doesn't feel like something that would ever happen, you know? It, I cannot suspend my disbelief that much. It just feels like the author is writing it, you know, rather than um, like a, a story that at the, at the moment you do feel is real. So I have problems with that book and I love to see negative comments on it on Goodreads because it's so satisfying. I don't know why, but it's so <laughs> satisfying to see people um, make fun of how much detail, unnecessary detail that no one cares about is just written on the story like it matters you know like we're supposed to care what the characters have a breakfast and why and how they like their eggs to be and this and that and the other so it's just really annoying to read this book um the next one is um this is a really weird to, thing to talk about but <clears throat> just the general idea and writings of Marquis de Sade or Marquis de Sade um I'm not sure how it's pronounced but this author is, um, I mean, we know who it is, but his writings are not very talked about because he was a very controversial person to start with. So, you know, leaving the kind of person he was behind. Um, I don't think his writings, I mean, I enjoyed them while I read them. I think it's, his writings um, are giving way too much credit. I think that people... Um, tend to go when sometimes when, when books are really shocking and and really violent people have this in immediate illusion that they're good. And that's something that I talked about in my review for for Nothing by Jane Taylor. But I do think that that one was a little bit more moderate. This is just exploitation. This is an exploitation film in the shape of several several stories and of course it was way before exploitations film were f films were even a thing but my point is that i don't think it takes m that much genius to write all these shocking things and all these really cruel things of people doing um things you know horrible stuff to each other and you you could really just ask a 13 year old guy to to write this and he would do something very similar and just as good, really. I mean, the characters are not particularly interesting. The stories are not uh, very complex or anything like that. And so, and, you know, people tend to focus on the writings and the philosophies of this guy. And they make no sense. They're, they really don't convince me at all. So I'm really not convinced at all by this, um, these stories. And I, I guess that you could enjoy it as erotica if you're into that. But otherwise, I, I, I think that people give this way... this give these books way too much credit and I'm and I'm really wanting to find more people who um who can who also think this way about these books because I don't see them discussed much in the first place so yeah there's that number two is um this is a romance novel which is not very popular but again I love to this is one that I especially love talking badly about and it is Bound by the Heart by Marsha Canham. So I read this while I was looking for a pirate romance novel, which I guess I should have known what I was getting into because what and what it really ended up being was like a rape story turning to romance. And I mean, I wasn't disgusted as I read it. But to me, it's just really cheap to have no development at all to romance and just have it be, oh yeah, I, I hurt you and I raped you and suddenly you're in love with me, you know, like the character is not even, you know, there's not even this um, development of, of a real romance because I do believe, you know, for example, um, Stockholm Syndrome, it is a thing, but there has to be, and I'm not, and I'm not discrediting the use of rape in romance. My point is that there can be romance after things like that are done to to others but there have to be some things that happen for, for it to be a romance you know there have there has to be some affection from him towards her some you know some real respect or like a huge favor that um a rapist for example does to the victim or something like that 
for there to be some sort of, of like ability, you know? Um, there has to be realism because if, if there's if it's just rape and suddenly she's in love, it's unbelievable. There's no way for me as a reader to think that that's it, it feels like fantasy, you know, it feels like something that and I understand that it really is fantasy and that's my issue with, with lots of books like this. That you can tell that it's really the author's fantasy in in a very self indulgent way in a book. And I think that's that's something that we should kind of work on, um, especially like uh, romance authors and stuff. Um, it really sells. I, I know it sells, but um, it's, it doesn't make for good books, which is I, I'm pretty sure it's not really their their main uh, goal. It's, it's still a way in which I can explain that I don't like this, you know. So number one is like I said. I said it was going to be the most obvious one and it is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. I read this the first time, I think I was about 9 years old or 10 and I did like it, um, I was really into it and you know I hadn't read much at the time. I don't think I ever reread that book but I started watching, suddenly a, a couple years ago I think it was, I started watching or reading reviews on that book and I, I I just found a lot of enjoyment from seeing people negatively talk about Twilight and how it was just so bad and you know not just not just in terms of the writing style but also how what kind of message was given with the relationship between Bella and Edward and that sort of thing um, and I have also noticed that people on on Goodreads do seem to be pretty critical of this kind of thing, at least the ones that I tend to watch, but you know, the people who end up leaving most of the reviews on on books like um, Beautiful Disaster or Colleen Hoover stuff or whatever, they seem to all have this really uncritical kind of view of, um, well, this book made me feel good and I lived out my fantasies, so five stars or four stars or whatever, so... It's kind of strange to me how uncritical some people are of the things that they read and how how we view sometimes reading as an escapism from reality, um, which I think it, it really isn't, but um, nor do I think it's should really meant to be, but that's a whole nother discussion that really w would get on, would take me a long time to even get to. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, at least found it entertaining or anything, or at least, you know, something like that. And I hope to see you on the next one.